There we go. Okay. All technical problems are resolved. Hmm. A few people asking for about uh, more Hearts of Iron 3. That might happen. That was a lot of fun, I have to say, last week. Tons of fun. Uh, and we may have to go and revisit that at some point. Certainly. Dun, 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 dun. Hadros with the resub. Thank you very much. Hadros. Thank you. Wow, this is weird. I'm actually getting, like, visual lag on my own camera feed here. But everything seems to be all right. Okay. So we're going to be starting a new game here. Once again, we're going to use the three unique component and four unique component mods, which give us some more stuff. Hey, there's another explosion. Who's that? Chrisernja? Holy crap, dude. Wow. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, thank you very much. You guys just keep watching. Wow, I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, wow. That is really awesome. Thank you so much for your support. It makes a big difference. Also, uh, Pawnbroker and Freddy Firecaster. I know at least Freddy's been a dwarf before in Dwarf Fortress. And Unstable Voltage. Thank you very much, everyone, for resubscribing and continuing to make this channel what it is. I think we've got something pretty cool going on. I, I have fun. I don't know if you guys have fun, and I'd like to keep doing it. So I appreciate that you guys continue to support the channel in a variety of different ways. Thank you so much. Hey, Matost. Thank you very much for the sub. Uh, single player. Set up the game. Okay. So here's what we're going to be playing. Everything's good here. We're going to be playing as the Shoshone on the Great Plains. It seemed... It seemed thematic. Hey, Kenthrus. Thank you very much for the sub. The Great Plains, the Shoshone, seem to make a lot of sense. I really like the Shoshone ability to just get more territory. I mean, I don't, I'm not even convinced it's their strongest ability. The Pathfinders might be their strongest ability. Although, we'll see, the Pathfinders won't really be much of a thing on this map. Um, it's quite uh, it's quite packed, quite crowded, so we actually won't get very many goodie huts at all with that. Um, but just like when I play Beyond Earth, I like to play as the... Uh, is it the PAC or whatever that gets faster border growth? I just like fast border growth. So... We're going we're gonna to do that. It's going to be great. Um, also, with the third and fourth unique component mods, so normally, Pocatello, the Shoshone, they get Pathfinder, which is a replacement scout, which is awesome. And they get uh, Comanche Riders, which are, I don't know, fine, I guess, they replace cavalry. The third unique component mods adds the Buffalo Pound, which replaces the Watermill, and it still gives you the same food and production bonus as a Watermill, but it does two other things. It gives you plus one food on bison, and when you build it, it spawns a bison tile, um, next to your city, which is cool. Uh, Haza says, Hey Quill, have you been up keeping up with TI5? Yes, absolutely. The International is a big Dota 2 competition uh, with a massive $18 million prize pool. And I've been watching it quite a bit. Uh, I've probably caught about 80% of the game so far and really pumped to keep watching it. Super cool, super fun. Um, so the Buffalo Pound is cool, and we get to build teepees, which you can build on planes, which we're going to have no shortage of planes on this map, which is one of the other reasons I thought it would be pretty good. Um, it gives you plus one food, plus one culture. So, I mean, a, for, uh, a farm can give you more food, especially with all the upgrades you can get later on, but it's nice to get the extra culture on this, plus, again, it just feels cool. Let's check the advanced setup over here. So we're having normal eight number, eight civilizations, 16 city-states. This is a standard size map, but Great Plains is actually fairly small. It doesn't have a lot of water on it, so uh, most of what's on the screen you can settle, but it's actually going to be surprisingly crowded, I think. Play Immortal Difficulty, Epic Speed, we're going to start in Ancient Era as normal, and everything else is going to be set as per the usual. So let's go ahead and start up the game and see what we end up with. Uh, yep, so Haida says, even though you're using the Shoshone, you're planning, planning on trying to play a heavier religion game than usual, like you said you were going to try to... Oh, that's true! I did say that. And that might be a possibility. One of the things... That, so if you don't know, the Pathfinders here which are your replacement scouts, when you pop a goodie hut, you get to pick what your reward will be, which means we could focus on getting early religion. Um, and probably, at the very least, I would try to grab at least one so I can get a pantheon quite quickly. Now, what I was thinking we would do with the pantheon is take God of the Open Skies, because I've done a couple of uh, test loads on this game to get an idea of what the map looks like. Hey, Advlon, Advlion, thank you very much for the sub. Um... Uh, and, and you get tons and tons and tons of cattle. 
And obviously we'll also have bison, although bison might have camps as opposed to pastures. But in any case, God of the Open Skies gives you plus one culture per pasture. Um, our teepees give us extra culture, so it's like, oh, this whole culture game kind of thing. But there is something to be said about, um, instead of that, grabbing a pantheon that gives us more faith, and then see if we can roll that into a more religious gameplay. Uh, as always, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to adapt to the circumstances as they show themselves. Now, one thing I will say about this map is in the middle is all plains. On the far west, it seems to be fairly hilly and mountainous. And on the far right, it, we're dropping packets again. Okay, now we're fine. It's so annoying. I wonder if anyone's doing any uploads or downloads anywhere in the house. Um, on the far right is very foresty. One of the things you can do on this map is if you pick a civilization that's got a forest bias or a hill bias, you will start on the edges, which gives you a lot more safety. We're going to be stuck right smack in the middle, which will make things a little bit dicey. Cross your fingers. Hope it works out okay. Mm -hmm. Bisons are camps, yes. They need trapping, not animal husbandry. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, most likely, we'll settle in place here. I suppose it might be worth just peeking over the hill first and seeing if it might be worth going one tile to the north. Um, I don't think so. We could get an extra cow. I guess I should have checked down here to see if there's anything I was going to lose instead. Um, but we are going to get the marble where we are. One, two, th oh no, we're not. But we're not going to move away from the river. Let me move one more, make sure there's no wonder. No, actually, oh, this is the northern edge of the map. This is the absolute edge of the map. We can't go any further north than this. Um, and with that in mind, there is something to be said about moving one tile north. Because we're never going to settle a city up here. Which means we're never going to work this cattle directly. If I do this, I mean, we're not losing anything that we can see. I kind of like this idea. Erdnot, thank you very much for the sub. And 222Blue, no, that was a timeout. Never mind. It, this is Mitch. There we go. I was like, there's, there's two. <laughs> thank you very much for the sub. I think I'm tempted to go one tile north because otherwise there we might get something cool over here that will never otherwise work. We're going to do that. Which did, if we were here, one, two, three, yeah, we wouldn't have worked this cow. So, I mean, again, we might lose some stuff down here, but we, I think at the very least we probably broke even and maybe came out slightly ahead, and it might give us more room for another city down there. Again, this map will feel very crowded. And as I've shown, you really like to grab a couple of cities very early on because it gives you so much terrain. Um, we are going to build another Pathfinder right away. I don't always go scout first, but as the Shoshone, it's especially useful to get that. We are also, this time, we're going to go and do the production focus lock, and then manually lock there, which has various advantages. Luckily... It's a good thing we got the extra tiles because you really want a two food and something else tile in your first that that your first worker your first citizen can work and we wouldn't have had that if it weren't for the fact that we had extended borders. <laughs> and grab a population point for the ruin. So that's normally what I grab first. The first thing is I grab the plus one population. Um, after that, it's kind of a toss up. Getting the bonus culture is nice because you get a social policy earlier. Getting the piety is nice. Um, getting the upgrades, because the um, uh, the Pathfinder's upgrade to Composite Bowman, which is amazing. Really good. Um, and hello, Earl. Thank you very much for the sub. We're going to pottery first so we can get those early shrines, because that's always good. Obviously, we're going to pop this goodie hut. And yeah, this the edge will just stop here. It looks like there's water, but we there's not an actual ocean over there. You see? It just stops. Uh, first thing we're going to do is get plus one population. It gives you such a huge speed boost. It's really, really, really worthwhile. I'm going to lock you in there for some extra growth as well. And there we go. Uh, so no one will ever work this cattle directly, but that's okay. Denny, thanks for the sub. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a city state over there. Um, well, that means I will go right. Now, I really want to get away from the top edge because I do want to find more goodie huts. Now, obviously there can be some right at the top. But I don't want to walk right along the top. Son of a bitch! The first person we meet is Attila? <sighs> yeah, okay. Where'd you come from, buddy? 
can't see his unit. Okay, the west. Well, if we get lucky, he's going to be on the other side of the city-state, and you move directly east from where he is. Alright, well, we're going these hills. There we go. Goody hunt number two. Nice. This might be a really short game, guys. Depends. Alright, um, so... I think I'm going to go for culture, because if you take this, you'll be able to get your first social policy right away. We're going to open up with tradition, which right away will give us another plus three culture per turn. So that adds up to quite a lot more. We don't really need to rush the new tech as much. Obviously, it's very nice, and the unit upgrade is amazing. But I really do want to pop this. There we go. Oh, we actually can't get our social policy right away. Still one more turn away. It is going to be really nice to get that tradition ticking. We have to watch where the scout goes. Clearly, we're not going to scout over here for a goody hut. I mean, we'd like to find out what's next to us soon, but we really want to find those goody huts. All right, we're going to unlock tradition. Plus three culture. So we've just uh, quadrupled our culture per turn right now, which is nice. Let's pop onto the hill for some vision. Good city spot right over here. Holy cow. Especially since uh, most and Connie won't work the marble. I mean, it might eventually come within our borders. And there's a city state over here. Um... I'm not going to pledge to protect them, because actually, I might steal a worker from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'll cut through Melbourne. Or Melbin, as the Aussies say. Is that a border here? No. No, no, there's just the, lake, the, the shore of the river. Um, I'm going to go southish. Cape Town. Nice to see you. So there's two variants of the Great Plains map. There's Great Plains and Great Plains Plus. Great Plain Plus, all the city-states will be on the outside edge of the map, and all the actual civilizations will be in the middle. Whereas this one, um, there, this is the normal one. They're just scattered sort of throughout. Barbarian encampment. Oh, I'll move there for some vision. Okay, quite dense down here in city-state. At least we won't have a neighbor over here. Where my goody huts? Hello, Vatican City. I guess we'll cut around there. That'll be a thing. Two turns. And then we'll leave and go south or southwest, I suppose. I don't know how many more goody huts we're going to find. This is a really tough little starting setup. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the first two people I meet, Attila and Genghis. Guys, well, if we can survive the early game, we're going to be fine, but wow. All right, Pathfinder finished on the same turn as we finish our um, um, our pottery. So we have to decide whether we go Monument or Shrine. I guess it's sort of six of one half dozen to the other. I mean, we could also go for an early granary, but I think you start ticking this as quickly as possible. Uh, turn them against each other? Yeah, we'll really try to do that sort of thing. Uh, I do want to work... I think I'm going to go Shrine. Shrine Worker Settler. That sort of thing. Delay the monument a little bit. Because we are going to get a lot of culture with our teepees and stuff, so we're going to be okay. Um, okay. We are going to need calendar work to cotton. Where's my second luxury source? It must be right down here. Hopefully I didn't move too far away from it that I've lost access to it completely. That would be bad. Um, we will need calendar for that. Animal husbandry would be nice to reveal horses, which are another nice production boost. Plus, then we can start working our pastures and our cows. Um, I think I'll start with animal husbandry, then we'll get calendar writing. Something like that. Denibals and Scoots just subscribed. Thank you very much! Yeah, I still need Shaka and Napoleon. That'll be the complete set. The full Warmonger collection. Check out over here. I think I might have moved away from my luxury resource. Because you should start with two in your capital. Usually. One, two, three. Ah, we have marble and it is in range. Lovely. I mean, unless someone beats us to it. But that seems kind of unlikely. I'm really worried we're not going to have any more goody huts. Polynesia! Hey, sorry about the total lack of water on this map, buddy. Sucks to be you.
So we have one floodplains tile over there. A little bit of desert. I mean, we're not going for a Petra or anything. Okay, there's Attila's Court. Decent distance. We're not right next to each other. It mostly come down to uh, what happens to a city in between here. So we're going to grow in three turns. That's good. I'm going to bombard it somewhere. That's fine. Move away a little bit. There's Honolulu. Well, I think what we want to do is we're going to want to settle over here relatively quickly. Okay, I really want a, a composite bowman upgrade on my Pathfinders. Holy cow. Pathfinders usually do so much work for you. They get you so much stuff, so many upgrades, but we might be out. There might be a couple more hiding somewhere, but I don't know where to hunt for it. And I really want to see this. Less of a chance of a goodie hut, but I really need to know what's there. Policy! We're going to go to Oligarchy, mostly because we're working our way up to legalism. We actually might just take the, the free monument. We might not build a monument in Mosin Kani, which is a little bit odd, but you have to remember the timing on everything is accelerated because we got the plus one population. So some of your normal sort of build order is going to be a bit different. Hmm. Let's work uh, this tile for, again, continued growth, which is very good. So the reason you do this, where you lock production and then you put these tiles, and I don't usually do it when we're live streaming because it takes a little bit longer, um, is when your city processes end of turn, the first thing it does is it adds its food. And after that, it adds its production. So what can happen is if you add the food and you get an extra pop, then, um, uh, what did I say? If you, if you get the food, you get an extra piece of population. That population will work a high production tile before you calculate it in the production. So you get like an extra hammer or two. It's not much of a difference, but it's a little something something. And it, it is worth doing like right at the start, but I quickly like, ugh, it's too much work and too annoying. So Attila. We don't know where Genghis is, do we though? Okay. Genghis the, the Hun and Attila the Khan. Lots of marble in this area. <gasps> Goodyat! No one take it. No, that was close. Budica. So someone else who's relatively aggro. Mine. This is tough. Because I really want Composite Bowman. But we can get the Religion Boost here. Which allows us to get our um, Pantheon. And I think I would like God of the Open Skies. I mean, obviously, free tech is good, too. But if we get this, we can clear out uh, those barbarian encampments. We can do things. We can help defend ourselves with it. We, we got to take the religion. We got to take the religion. Oh, I want that upgrade so bad, though. Well, let's pop that. Okay. And yeah, there will just be lots and lots of cows on the map. Oops, out of moves, okay. Ethiopia, hey! Non-aggro guy, so... Polynesia and him. Does we have horses? We does. We has two. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna have lots of pastures. So yeah, um, God of the Open Sky, I'm gonna take. Plus one culture from pastures, we're gonna have a bajillion pastures on this map. It would be very nice to keep our religion... Um, it might be hard, since we're not actually taking something that adds faith. Um, what would add faith? No, no. 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 And no. Alright. God of the open sky it is. My first priority, usually with, with uh, Pantheons, is stuff that adds more faith, which is always good. Um, and then second is usually more culture. Okay, Shrine is done. Population, so we're not going to pop four for some time now. We are playing on epic speed, of course. We are working the food tiles. Yes, that's good. Um, I think what we do is we squeeze out a worker first. This, the worker will help us, you know, accelerate everything, but it also means we get our pastures going on, which is nice for us. You're in my way, but all right. Orba, thanks for the sub. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, the cows. Yeah, this is the, the Great Plains map, man. That's what you get. Crazy amounts of cattle. 
all the hamburgers you could ever want. A granary would give us a lot of food quite quickly. And there, there is something to be said about that, right? Um, because you get two from the base, we're working two grain, you get two food a lot faster. There is something to be said about it. Mm. And then you don't have to build the improvement yet, you also don't have to defend the granary. It's a lot of food. It delays the culture from the things, but it's actually a much safer pick. Alright, let's go for the granary first. Then we'll put more production into the worker, although we'll probably pause the worker for the settler as soon as we hit size 4. Size 4 is just a nice sweet spot. This will officially visit the Cape Town area. As you can see, forest on the right side. This is actually probably the actual edge of the map. And as we go east or west, we'll see more um, more hills and mountains. Hitman Zeus, thanks for the resub. Mm -hmm. Orders grew to get an extra horse. Go on the hill. Mm, nothing here. Could probably just automate these. One thing that's going to happen on this map. Oh yeah, is it time to steal workers yet? No. On epic speed, we got to wait till at least turn 35, maybe 40ish for someone to pop out a thing. But I would very much like to steal some workers. And yeah, maybe we don't have to build a worker. But we'll see. We might be able to grow fast enough that building and stealing becomes a very viable course of action. It's a little too early to steal. And yeah, we could just avoid building a worker altogether. There's another city-state over here. It's going to be awkward. We can... Where can we put a city? Shite. Because assuming... I'm not sure exactly. The fog war makes it hard to tell. One, two, three. Yeah, mm. We might be forced to stick a city sort of up here. It'll be halfway dangling off the edge. Although this would still be fine, assuming we can put a city there. That would be an okay location. Paul Lowy, thank you very much for the sub! And again, thank you very much for all your support, all y'all. Mm-hmm. Furs. Assume our borders are going to grow to that marble. Yeah, good. Nothing I want to spend my money on right now. No, I don't need to grab a tile or anything. Um, Behringer Crater! It's our first natural wonder. Very far away from where we are. That's for sure. Erdnot says, Don't worry about Genghis and Attila too much. Nomadic empires like the Huns and Mongols are well known for their hatred of the wide open plains. <laughs> At least you chose the right map. Rip you. <laughs> and unfortunately... No, actually, we still don't know where Genghis is. I mean, he's got a dude down here. Um, it'd be nice if we could just get them to fight each other. That would be brilliant. We don't have any immediate neighbor to our right, though, which means we only have to worry about one flank. And we're at the top of the map. So again, just the one flank, which is really quite helpful. There is a border there. That is Mongolian territory. Oh, Christ, we're fine. Well, fine. For different values of fine. Ford settle Attila. I mean, let me tell you something. This is a freaking awesome spot right here. It is unbelievable. Or maybe just down here. It's a little bit safer. Still gets one of the silvers. It's far enough away. That might be the ideal. Hello, Jerusalem. We're going to have to uh, bring back at least one of these Pathfinders to escort my um, my settler in a second. Well, this one's going to keep coming around here. Um, maybe pop in Jerusalem territory for a second. Yeah, I think that'll be good for vision, so let's do that. Uh, one, two, three, four, right? Because we can't settle here. Maybe... Hmm... We can even settle on this side of the river. Obviously, a lot of overlap with Mosin Kani. But both cities would have a lot of good tiles of their own that they'd be happy to work. <gasps> Another goodie hat! Yes! Come to daddy. Just peek there. Oh, barbarian encampment. Get 
Darava, thanks for the sub. Polynesia in the middle of aggro hell, that's true. I might get run over and just lose their stuff, which would be unpleasant. Okay, more pop, eh. Discover a great profit. You don't actually get it. You just get 90 faith, and we're far away from our actual great profit. Um, technology, good. I'm going to upgrade a unit. I really want one free composite bowman slash scout. It's just too good. Plus, soon we're going to get some missions to destroy some barbarian encampments, and there won't be a ton of those because this map is going to fill up insanely fast. So we want to be able to use some of that as quickly as possible. Um, I guess I'll go and pop this fog over here since I don't need to come home quite yet. How's that goodie st hut still here? Yeah, I don't know. The AI just didn't explore in that direction. This bottom of the map. There's lots of wine. Hello, Wittenberg. I'm the first person to discover them. Yeah, I just literally never went in that dis direction yet. Amazing. All right, granary coming up. I think friendship with Polynesia makes a great deal of sense, actually. They're far enough away, I don't have any early war aspirations against them. Certainly not in the next, uh, what is it, 45 turns on Epic Speed? Mm, Archer. How come it's damaged? Must have fought someone else's scout. 